Radiation is powerful, dangerous, and useful. It has many uses, such as the treatment of cancer. On the other hand, it can very well just cause cancer. Radiation is a term that gets said a lot. It's a term that gets commonly misunderstood. The word radiation jumps out in our mind to danger and fear. The way to get around this fear is to understand what it is and the basics around it. In today's video, we'll be taking a look at beta radiation and demonstrating how we can control it at home. To classify radiation broadly, we can say radiation is the emission or transmission of energy through the form of waves or particles through a space or medium material. Now, very simply put, energy move somewhere else. We can come into contact with radiation constantly by the definition. Light coming from this video is radiation. Sound waves you're hearing from this video are radiation. If you're watching over wireless, this is radiation. These are forms of non-ionizing radiation. Non-ionizing radiation is radiation that does not break chemical bonds. And as the saying says, it does not ionize atoms. Beta decay is a form of ionizing radiation, the type of radiation that is harmful to organisms. Ionizing radiation is just not limited to beta decay. It also includes gamma, alpha, x-ray, and particles with energy over 10 kilovolts. With some of the basics out of the way, what makes beta decay special, and what is a beta particle? A beta particle is a high-energy, high-speed charged particle. It has two decay methods, either a positron or electron. Its symbol is the Greek symbol for beta. Hmm. When it comes to penetration power and ionization power, beta falls between alpha and gamma, being not as strong as alpha when it comes to ionization power, and not as much penetration power as gamma. The penetration power is related to ionization. The higher the ionization, the less penetration it can reach, but the more damage it does to cells. My favorite effect from beta K is Chenkov's radiation. Chenkov's radiation occurs when high energy beta particles moving faster than the speed of light pass through a clear dielectric medium. Yes, you heard that right, a particle moving faster than the speed of light. The maximum speed of light is in a vacuum, not through a medium material thus giving a fast enough moving particle the ability to move faster than the speed of light, but only through a medium. Chenkov's radiation can be seen in nuclear reactors. When fission takes place, high energy electrodes in the form of beta particles are released. When these move through the cooling water and they create this blue glow, which is the Chenkov's radiation. As I said before, there are two forms of beta decay, positron B positive and electron B negative. Now, for the sake of today's demonstration and simplicity, we'll be ignoring positron emission and focusing on electron emission beta decay. Because an electron is released in the beta minus, that particle has a charge, a negative charge, due to it being an electron. When an electron is in motion, a magnetic field is created, and we can use this principle to control the beta particle quite easily with a simple magnet. Old school CRTVs make use of the principle. A high voltage source creates electrons that are fired down towards the screen to create the image. The problem now is the electrons come to a point on the screen, just creating a point. To get an image, these electrons need to be moved. This is where the magnets come in. By using electromagnets, the electrons can be controlled and aimed. This effect can be done to beta particles. Time to bend some radiation. Here's our experimental setup. If you recognize this setup, I use it in my inverse square law. On the board sits a ruler, the probe, and our source of radiation. The source of radiation here isn't primarily a beta emitter. It's radium paint, which, for those that know, produces alpha particles. But through its daughter decay, it produces beta, which is what we'll need for this experiment. Next, we have this screw, which was not in my demonstration for the inverse square law. This is where our magnets will sit. Now, due to our magnets having the ability to affect charged particles, it will deflect the beta particles, which won't reach the meter. Now, the meter is just a basic pancake probe that detects alpha, beta, and gamma. On the probe exists this sheet of lead. This will stop the beta particles from spreading out and just hitting it. Just a column of beta particles coming straight that we can affect via the magnet will come out. Now, this is all hooked up to a survey meter, Ludlum, Ludlum Model 3. Now let's fire that up to the 0.1 settings and set it to slow mode and turn the audio on and get a baseline reading.
Now we can see that the probe is nearly maxed out on this setting. Now let's take our magnets, which are specifically short enough to not sit in front of the beam so that they can deflect it. Now that the magnet's in place, we can watch the meter slowly drop off radiation. We can see that a little less than half the radiation. Now the leftover is most likely gamma coming directly from the source, or beta particles that haven't been deflected. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you next time. If you have any questions, please post them in the comment section below. Check out the links in the description for my social media, and check out my Discord server, where we have many like-minded individuals ready to discuss all factors of science. Now here's a video of a pineapple exploding.